In the 1950s, London was desperately trying to stay positive as it recovered from the war. London truly is a city on the up. Yes, a lot of it was destroyed in the Blitz, but things are improving. This building looked like this in 1945, but just look at what you can find on the exact same side today. This absolutely stunning photograph. Yes, that will surely keep spirits up. And that's far from the only architectural improvement. Across town, the newly reconstructed London Observatory is truly a five-star experience. And what about the economy? Well, it was affected by the war, but many industries are once again thriving, such as the bankruptcy management and home repossession sectors. As for the social recovery, London is all about tolerance. This borough alone is home to 17 different anti-immigration groups. You're all welcome, fellas. So when it comes to the recovery, British people say London is doing A-OK. -okay. Unfortunately, there are still some bits of London that are absolutely disgusting, such as the East End. <laughs> don't go there. No, seriously, don't go there. The crime wave in the east of London continues to grow, so much so that police now estimate there are more crimes being committed in the area than there aren't. Police say they find it hard to investigate the crimes due to the local way of speaking. And did you have anything to do with it? No, I ain't never not done nothing to no one. Right, so, you've never, never not done uh, ca carry on. One of the main causes of the crime is poverty, caused by overcrowding and excessively large families. This 59-year-old woman breastfeeds 17 times a day. Why? She says she likes the taste and her mother doesn't mind. But the biggest problem of all is the organized gang crime, run by twin brothers Ronald and Reggie Cray, who rule with weapons such as fear, intimidation, and weapons. In the deprivation of post-war East London, the Cray twins had spotted an opportunity to build a criminal empire and had begun doing so with the help of a terrifying reputation. So what do you think about the Cray twins? Ah! Thank you. The Crays remove anyone who stands in their way and always make sure their violence is a mirror image of the actions committed against them. Boss, sir, then McAndrew stole some bottles from our pub and covered him with vodka and set him on fire. A nice one, boss, and his brother was caught free riding one of our cars. Then run him over. Nice one, boss, yeah, and, and Arthur Jenkins has been doing some financial fraud. Right, then, uh, oh, I'm trying to think what they, fraud. Yeah, uh, uh, and get, put some money on his, no, it's not, we don't want to give him money. Run him over, but yeah, just, just, just kill, kill him. him, kill him, yeah. Though infamously ruthless, the Crays valued family above all else, sometimes having to conduct criminal activities during family events that they refused to miss. I'm only going to watch this one more time, mate. Where did you put the diamonds? I told you I don't know where they are! I don't know where they are! You don't know where the diamonds are! Oh, what was that? Left foot on yellow? Oh my god, I'm already on my back. But anything for the birthday boy? There we go! Right, where was I? Oh yeah, you're careful, you're gonna get uh, diamonds, diamonds uh, run over, fuck's sake. In an attempt to curry public favour, the Crays tried to present themselves like Robin Hood figures. People act like we're all horrible on that, but because of us, there's now six soup kitchens in Bethnal Green, and that is a fact. Their charitable actions were more bark than bite, and an internship scheme they set up between the police and a local modern art college arguably aimed to thwart police investigations. After the witnesses have described him, a police sketch is drawn of the attacker. There he is. By the 1960s, the Crays seemed untouchable, but then... The Cray twins were arrested today after running over a double-crossing henchman while simultaneously making a speech at a baby shower. Officers also found a concealed weapon at the scene. Damning evidence as weapons are one of the weapons of choice of the craze. The report suggests that a recently fired pistol which produced a small plume of gas was vital to the investigation. In fact, I guess you could say it was the most important piece of evidence. No, smoking gun! Oh. The trial of the Craytwins began today as witnesses started making their statements. I call James Hammerson to the witness stand. Thank you. In court today, the Cray twins made their defense. No, no. There ain't no way we never done nothing to no one who's not done nothing to us. The Cray twins have been found guilty after a repurposed Cold War computer was used to decipher the Cockney language, finding that the Crays had essentially admitted to murder. We believe the Crays would only hand over their empire to close family members, all of whom are either dead, in prison, or traumatized children. We therefore believe East London is safe. Residents were overjoyed. So you had a drink to celebrate? Of course. It was never even claiming. But one police officer had uncovered something strange. It's about the Crays. Go on. They're not twins. 
Of course they're twins, what are you talking about? No, they're not twins, they're, they're triplets. They've got a brother called Max. You're joking. The team are putting together a profile as we speak. It, it looks like he's got brown hair, a multicoloured face made of 12 overlapping rectangles. What does he do? Looks like he runs a bed and breakfast in Dippington. The British village of Dippington only has one bed and breakfast, but it does have a sea view. Speaking to the owner, Max, it seems there are some issues. Hello, Max. Thank you for inviting me in your tavern. No, thank you for having me in your tavern. In my, my tavern. In... I spoke to the family in the front room, and they said they've been staying here for more than two and a half years, and they were only meant to stay for a week. Yeah. So they're refusing to pay you, and you're not confident enough to kick them out. Well, yes, I know. Like, yes, they are refusing to pay, but... but, but no, I'm, I'm not just two weeks after their conviction, the Cray twins met with their brother in prison. Oh, nice to see you guys. Yeah. It's been a while, but <laughs> we, had, we had good times back in the day, didn't we? I sure suppose we did, yeah. Oh, I was always thinking about that time where you was trying to make me drop kick that rabbit off a bridge. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I was yeah. going, no, no, I don't want to do it, I don't want to do it, please, please don't make me do it. <sighs> what was that clever argument you used to, to convince me to do it? Kick it, Brick. That was it. Anyway, listen. We basically need you to look after some stuff while we get out of here, alright? Uh, well, I'm not really sure I want to run a criminal. Do it. Another good point. Max was thrown straight into the deep end of a criminal underworld, which he arguably wasn't cut out for. Boss, Lenny is not telling us the code to the safe and needs a little bit of convincing, if you know what I mean. Right. I ain't gonna tell you! Well, if you don't tell us, we'll kill everyone you know. That's a bit much to start with, boys. Start a bit lower than that. Uh, if you don't tell us, we'll confiscate your socks. A bit more than that. And your shoes. A lot more. We'll feed every baby you've ever seen to a giant snake. Pretty much, and a bit weird. We'll give you a kiss on your tummy and a gold cup. That's more of a bizarre reward. Determined to improve, Max threw himself into a bank robbery. Right, boss, get out of there. Come on. Yeah. The roses are going to be ready. Yeah, come in, come in. Come in. Oh, my, oh, sorry, yeah. my foot's stuck. Ow. Okay, there we go. Oh, uh, by the way, I couldn't find the safe, so I just got these paper towels. Paper towels? Uh, yeah, well, they're worth their weight in gold. Uh, are they? Ah, uh, that's gold I'm thinking of. Under Max's leadership, the gang was starting to crumble. Once in control of the entire of East London, this is all that the Cray Gang now owns. One map in a park. Purportedly under the leadership of younger brother Max, many feel the gang is not as intimidating as it once was. So how do you feel about the craze now? <coughs> Thank you. Still in prison, rumours suggest that brothers Ronnie and Reggie aren't happy. Hello, the Cray Gang. Oh, listen up, you tit. We're fed up with you ruining all gang. Well, ruined's a strong word. I would say change. What's all that noise about? Oh, sorry, I'm in a park, so it's a bit windy. I'll, I'll, I'll go stand behind this map. But we found out recently that one of the top yanks, Marcelo Lorenzo, has moved to London and wants to take over the scene. Oh. Well, three o'clock Saturday, he's doing a deal involving a large amount of stolen jewellery. We need you to break into his warehouse, nick the jewellery, and make sure he pisses off back across the pond, all right? OK. We gave you a chance. Now you're on the last chance. And with us, you don't get a second chance. Well, right, isn't this my second chance? You know what I mean. Police believe Max Cray is planning to confront Marcelo Lorenzo this Saturday after they uncovered some confidential documents and also heard Ronnie Cray say this on a prison phone call in loads of detail. Police have struggled to investigate members of Lorenzo's gang due to their way of speaking. So do you work with Lorenzo? See, hey, I had the heebie-jeebies last night. Oh, for God's sake, carry on. Police officers have bugged the warehouse where they believe the confrontation will occur, though their names have been changed in this report to protect the identity of John Green and Rob Wood. Oh, no! Max Cray was called on security camera seemingly preparing for his meeting with Lorenzo. Many believe the outcome on Saturday could determine the fate of the entire Cray gang. And Max himself. At 3.15 on Saturday, Max and his cronies entered the warehouse. Lorenzo, well if it ain't the notorious Cray gang, how nice of you to join us. You're in our turf. Hand over the jewellery. Oh, what could you guys possibly want with some lady silver necklaces? They're worth their weight in gold. Well, in when sil in silk, I'm going to stop using that phrase. You know what? I don't think they'll look good on you. Oh, no, we're not wearing them. We're actually just going to sell them. I know. You knew that. Yeah. Anyway, now. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. You're surrounded, Lorenzo. It's over. Go back to America and don't come back. Okay, okay. Fine. God damn it. All right. So, we're, we're done. We did, we did it. No, I am afraid, boss. But we did everything. The message from your brother's boss. Kill him. S sorry? Kill him and prove you're a real cray. Uh, Take this, shoot him. I, I, I don't really want to shoot him. Do it. I, I, I don't want to do it. Oh, 
The rules are so weird. Do it now. I don't, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. Do it. Please, 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 please don't make me do, do it. it now. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. What are you shooting out the window for? I'm not going to be bullied. Still get nightmares about killing that rabbit when I was five, and I don't want anything to ever happen like that ever again. Max Cray refused to kill gang rival Marcelo Lorenzo today, instead shooting multiple bullets out of a window, all of which struck a nearby rabbit sanctuary. Police arrested everyone at the scene, though an investigation found that Max Cray's only crime was stealing 40 paper towels from a bank, meaning he was released that afternoon. The Cray gang was dissolved in its entirety today after Max Cray sold the park map back to the council. So the Cray gang has gone forever, how do you feel about that? Yay! Right, uh, anything else to add? Uh, uh-uh. Can you not speak at all? Uh-uh. Max Cray has returned to his life as a bed and breakfast owner, and his tavern has its first vacancy in more than two years. He sort of threatened to kiss her tummies if we didn't leave. Max claims, however, that he will always remember his gang experience. So what was it like being the head of a criminal empire? Well, I didn't really enjoy running the gang, but I think if I learned one thing, it was that you should always stand up for yourself. Uh, no more questions, please. Uh, just one more question. Uh, okay, yeah, one more. No. No. <laughs>